folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I decided to do another movie review that's part of the Hannibal Lecter collection. It's a movie that was based on a second adaptation by Thomas Harris, who just written the novel Red Dragon, but this was his follow-up to it. And not only that, this was a film that earned five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Actress. And also, it's the film that became this popular to this day for it because it actually became one of the highest grossing films of all time, earning the number one spot five weeks in a row at the box office and stayed at the top ten ever since, called The Silence of the Lambs. Yep, this is the film about a young FBI trainee who wants to have taken a vice by a cannibalistic serial killer named Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Yep, and they're both played by Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins. And this is of course the Blu-ray edition that I bought at Target for $7.50, you know, good price, which, is, which they actually ported um, all the extras from the two disc special edition except for the other two I believe you know probably a few so I wish they had included that as well because it would have been worth it so that means I had to track down the uh, the two disc special edition just for that because they had the one feature red that involves uh, Jodie Foster and, and Jonathan Demme you know talking about the film and also has the commentary as well so they should have included this but it's good to know because uh, this was a film that that a lot of people you know talk about many times and yeah and, and it is overrated and but it's still you know fun to watch yeah uh, they they did use a different cover art for which is taken directly from the the two this special edition so yeah they give it the uh, those two labels that they put in. It says the Silence of the Lambs. They use the cover art from the poster, make it more modernized, and they just added a border on the side that looked like uh, I think it's supposed to be uh, you know, paper, you know, or at this rate, you know, <laughs> human skin. You know, <laughs> yeah, because you know the the whole film about about another serial killer named Buffalo Bill basically skins uh, woman victims yeah well it's very gruesome once you see it but it's also very chilling and gripping and it's a film that pretty much had a lot of tremendous dialogue that they come up with you know from the two performances yeah tons of great dialogue here it's the film that that became um, Daphne Hopkins' best performance as Dr. Hannibal Lecter. That he really <laughs> made it up for the character himself because after Brian Cox uh, played his in Manhunter, I guess, you know, this is the film he really can help but enjoy. Yeah. Well, anyway, but still, um, and I always have enjoyed this movie. It's, it's been my favorite, you know, along with Manhunter. I would watch this any time. Yeah. So, yeah. In fact, I also heard um, on the trivia questions that, e even on the interviews, they say that originally this film was going to be directed by actor Gene Hackman. And they were going to have Michelle Pfeiffer in the role too, later on. You know, once uh, Jonathan Demme took over. But of course, Gene Hackman, you know, turned it down because yeah, from Ted Talley's uh, screenplay because they thought it was uh, too dark. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, Gene Hackman has done a lot of films, mostly film noirs and all this other stuff, and I guess this is the kind of film that made it up for it. Uh, I don't know, I mean, who knows how this was going to turn out. And also, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> saying that, said the same thing, you know, it was too gruesome and too dark. And guess what? She went on to do 
Batman Returns as the Catwoman. <laughs> Go figure. I'm just glad, to, you know, you know, they got a good director, you know, Donovan Demi, and they got Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins to play the roles, so I think this would be the perfect choice for a film like this, because they knew they could handle this. They really could. Yeah. Of course, the main reason why Anthony Hopkins got chosen is that Jonathan Demme had an interest of him when he saw a movie called The Elephant Man that was directed by David Lynch. It was a film with with John Hurt in it. So he thought, you know, he was interested in having him play in the role. Yeah, so it's perfect. And also another reason why Jodie Foster got cast because of her performance in the movie The Accused, which earned her an Oscar for that role. So that was perfect. So yeah, it's um, <laughs> hard to believe that this was going to be a predicament that they were going to win the Academy Awards for this film. Yeah. So, but um, let's get right to it. Because I want to talk more of how the film goes. So anyway, the film stars Jodie Foster with Anthony Hopkins, Scott Glenn, Ted Levine, who's very good in this film, very chilling, as Buffalo Bill. Anthony Hield, who actually looks a little bit like a younger version of Nick Nolte. Yeah. If you see him today, he does look exactly like him. <laughs> Book Smith, Diane Baker, Cassie Lemmings from the movie Hard Target, Frankie Faison, Tracy Walter, Charles Napier from Rambo First Blood Part 2. He's also been in other stuff also. With cameo appearances by uh, Roger Corman and Chris Isaac. It's written by Ted Talley. And it's directed by Jonathan Demme. So let's get right to it. The movie begins when a young FBI trainee named Clarice Starling, who's played by Jodie Foster, who just got pulled from the training activities at the FBI Academy in Quantio, Virginia, that were an FBI superior from the Boo Woo's Behavior Science Unit named Jack Crawford, who's played by Scott Glenn, had offered her to assign to interview a former psychiatrist and a cannibalistic serial killer named Dr. Hannibal Lecter, who's played by Anthony Hopkins, which is basically used as a pursuit that might be very useful in order to stop and catch a serial killer that's nicknamed Buffalo Bill, who's played by Ted Levine, who actually skins a female victims as corpse. So Starling winds up traveling to Baltimore State Hospital where he meets a psychiatrist named Dr. Frederick Chilton who's played by Anthony Heald who winds up going straight to Lecter's solitary quarters. And once um, Starling meets uh, Lecter and he winds up going very impatient with her by attempting to di dissecting him and rebuffs her with all the information that they need. Yeah, and of course, this was also the film that started the, the famous line, A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fiber beans and a nice chiente. Yeah. <laughs> that scene alone was the most popular quote of all that's coming from you know, Hannibal Lecter. Basically, uh, once he started leaving, you know, one of the prisoners wants to throwing some semen on her face. Yeah, pretty messed up. So then after that, she wants to coin this act unspeakable ugly, you know, as Lecter you know, tries to call Starling back and tells her about to seek out an old patient of his. So that leads to a storage shed yeah, which is called your self storage. The storage uh, room was already locked, and she was trying to open it, you know, with the key. So once she winds up entering, they had a huge room filled with a lot of stuff, and then underneath it, that's hidden by an American flag, 
was an old car and inside that car turns out to be a human head inside a glass jar. So when she came back, um, you know, she wants up getting, you know, all the papers, you know, and that she had to send to um, Hannibal Lecter just to talk about more information on the on the killer, you know, Buffalo Bill. So that way, that it might testify that it might be a link against it. So he offers to profile him on the condition that he might transfer away from Chilton, who who somehow detests behind all this. So meanwhile, Buffalo Bill wants up abducting the U.S. Senator's daughter named Catherine Martin, who's played by Brooke Smith. So Crawford authorized Starling to offer Lecter to take, to fake a deal promising a prison transfer if he provides information that help him find Buffalo Bill and actually rescues Catherine before goodness knows what happens to her. Yeah, which once uh, we find out about that in the movie, we actually learn that Buffalo Bill actually has his own secret lair in, in his house, which uh, he basically just uh, creates his own um, his own clothes by using female skin. Yeah, that that he just skinned off from the victims that he just killed. Yeah, because you know that that's that's where we lead to that famous scene in the movie, which yeah he wants up being dressed up. Um, sort of in, in some activity that he came up with. Yeah, the, the dance that he <laughs> comes up with. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that too much, but it's, it's one of those shocking moments that you saw in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it this way. But, um, yeah, there was also the scene where he actually kidnaps um, Catherine inside a huge well where he actually had to, you know, wants to bring it in the basket down there and is giving her the lotion and while she's just screaming for her life, you know, she wants to escape and get out of here. Yeah, I don't mind about this. I, I keep hearing all these helicopter noises from outside. It's, it's normal. Of course, you know, later on she was going to want to throw in the bucket on top, you know, so she can grab, um, his dog, his poodle. So that means, you know, she's going to actually uh, be able to hold the dog, you know. So then that way he'll get his attention by bringing her up. That's not helping much. Starling's decided to use uh, Lecter's annotation to the case files to realize that Buffalo Bill has knew his first victims personally. So he started to travel to his victim's hometown, discovers that he is indeed a, tr a tailor, and dress and does all all the dresses and and dress patterns by using the skin. Now we know about the scene in the movie where Hannibal Lecter was already transferred to um, to the museum inside a cage where he was being guarded by two guards. Yeah, one of them is played by Charles Napier, and it was a scene one of the gruesome scenes because after you know. Lecter was explained to um, to Starling about her experience when she was a little girl, and that um, that she was living with her father, who actually was a cop, you know, a state trooper, I believe, who actually wants up being killed in a store robbery. And um, yeah, because we also saw some flashbacks of her, you know, with her father, and then even. During the funeral scene, you know, after they sh show a, a perfect shot of of her being surrounded by lots of male state troopers or and and sheriffs out there, you know, trying to find out um, what was going on you know, during the funeral. Yeah. Well, anyway, she was she was explaining to Lecter about you know when he he wants up living with farmers that uh, she began to notice some of the screaming of the lambs, yeah, hence the title, Signs of the Lambs, was when, 
and she was trying to take one of the, the lambs out. Yeah, all the lambs were being slaughtered completely. So she's trying to take one and try to run away so and try to silence the lamb so it won't be harmed completely. Try to set them free you know, from being attacked. After all of this, you know, you know, all the, the SWAT teams and the backup, you know, winds up um, winds up going straight to the cage with where you saw the guard already being hanged up on, on the cage. You know, sort of like a sort of resemble like a butterfly or something. Where it's all hanged up and half of his body parts have been taken out, you know, his organs and all that. And the, and of course uh, Lecter was also disguised as by ripping off uh, another guard's face off. Yeah, you know, just replace him by putting him up on top of the uh, elevator. Yeah, where he just disguised himself as the guard by going inside the the ambulance and yeah, you know, and, and I believe he actually pretty much killed all the people over there. So they they also show shots of him in the deleted scenes if if you watch it. And that uh, he was driving on the ambulance truck. So yeah. So, yeah. Just to make way to escape. When Clarice finally um, spotted uh, Buffalo Bill's uh, house after, you know, Jack Crawford wants to bring in along with the SWAT team to go invade his house, which was the wrong house by the way. Yeah, it, it does cut to that next shot where she was the only one that's in that place and then and once uh, Buffalo Bill wants to uh, bring in the calling card because you already know one of the moths that you saw because early in the film they did show uh, one of the woman's victims his mouth inside where where he had to take out a cocoon which shows uh, which is called the uh, the Splinx moth which has a uh, a severe head that's on site, sort of like a deadhead moth, as they referred to, that you saw earlier in the film. Anyway, she noticed the the sewing and the moth that's on there, because you know you saw the the room that had all the moths on the other side. Yeah, once uh, Buffalo Bill was about to give her the calling card, he just yelled, "Freeze!" And then he escapes, and then suddenly she, she winds up chasing him around, you know, trying to find him, where he's just basically hiding around. And that is until, yeah, she even she even finally found um, Catherine down on the well. And then after that, the lights were turned off. After she spotted some some nasty stuff going around on the tub. And then Buffalo Bill winds up wearing those night vision binoculars uh, underneath it with the mask so basically he just seen his vision all the way straight it, it was green where you just show shot of close-up shot of uh, Koi starring just trying to move around yeah and then suddenly you know Buffalo Bill winds up touching her and it was ready to actually shoot her by using the gun and then once she, she hears the click she wants up shooting back and in that particularly great shot where he, she actually shots uh, Buffalo Bill completely and then he dies like this just like how uh, Francis Dollarhide from the movie Manhunter actually dies like yeah like that yeah he even the uh, shots the uh, the window all the way straight to it so so it brings some shade of light so it's perfect so anyway um Catherine finally got saved, who got out of the well. You know, things were going great, you know, as it turns out, you know, she was also saved as well, Clarice. And then the next one, she finally earned a medal for the capture of Buffalo Bill. So they all celebrated, so she's now the, uh, the official FBI agent. So suddenly she receives a call from Hannibal Lecter that he's now at an airport in... Bimini, and where he was about to go out for his next victim. Yeah, and that's where you saw the scene where he was about to go after the psychiatrist. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Yeah, where she's just hanging on the phone and just saying, "Dr. Lecter, 
Dr. Lecter as uh, Lecter hangs up the phone. So yeah, um, what can I say? I mean, this is definitely the best movie that uh, Jonathan Demme had to offer that's based on the Thomas Harris novel. And this was definitely the film that made it up for it. it had tremendously good shots, lots of great acting coming from Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, very solid and steady acting right there. You just can't help once you see the film to actually go into the characters and their minds and how they're going for. I love how they show the shots of Jonathan Demme actually uh, using some clever shots by by coming up with these close-ups of other faces because it almost looks like that they're actually looking towards the audience once they're looking straight at the camera. You know, you know like they show shots of of Anthony Hopkins, his close-ups, sort of in a an heuristic way, and then then they show another shot of Jodie Foster's close-up. You know, trying to talk about you know, all the information that they need from him. Another great score that was done by Howard Shore. You know, he's been best known for doing uh, composing work such as the Fly remake. Yeah, and he also went on to do other uh, David Cronenberg films and. And he also composed uh, other films like Doubt and all that. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy his music. They, they really orchestrated. It was perfectly well made, well shot. You know, because they shot this uh, in different cities in the United States. They shot some beautiful uh, forests and all the other shots around here in Virginia and uh, Ohio and. And of course, Washington D.C. and all the rest. Also, I like the shots where you know, where Hannibal Lecter wants to wearing that that mask of his, you know, just to cover his mouth. You know, while he was on the um, when he was under the the bed chair that you know he's been taken while he was talking to the the senator about her daughter, you know, Catherine, who's already been captured by Buffalo Bill. Yeah. It was, in, it was very intense. And of course, um, Ted Levine as Buffalo Bill, you know, definitely one of his uh, intense performances that you ever had. I mean, one of the most shocking and, and crazy uh, serial killers that you ever spotted. Yeah, that moment alone is what shocked the audience. In fact, that made it into a controversy. But nevertheless, um, this was a great film. It is overrated, I can sense that, because it is the most talked about film of all time. But it was the film that pretty much became, you know, the best of, out of the Thomas Harris novel. So, that's for sure. So I definitely recommend that movie. Um, for those um, who have seen it, or have not, then here's your chance. So anyway, I give Silence of the Lambs a solid 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.